So you want to make sure that you have a winning property and don't be afraid to pass them up. You might go through a bunch of losers and that's okay. It's better to shy away from properties if you're not sure than to jump into a deal and lock yourself into a contract for a year or two years if you're not really sure that it's a good deal. Welcome to Arbitrage to Equity, the show where you'll learn the exact tools, techniques, and action steps that people are using every day to build true passive income that transforms their lives and the lives of their families. I'm your host, Tom Swan. Now let's get down to details. What's up, guys? In this episode, I'm going to go over how to comp a property. It is probably the most frequently asked question that I get asked is how to find a profitable property. So I'm going to go over it. Uh, right now. So the first thing that I do is I find a list of properties in an area that I'm looking at. So whether that's finding, uh, compiling a list from Zillow, Redfin, for rent by owner, um, or you're working with properties that you're looking to um, purchase if you're in that market, but we're going to focus on arbitrage here. So what I do is I will make a list from Zillow, I'll compile a list, Zillow, Redfin, for rent by owner and find an area that I think will be profitable. So then what I'm gonna do is I I, I narrow down where that pool of properties lies. And I use Zillow, I use the map on Zillow, I zoom out so I can get a lay of the land and then kind of zoom in where that property falls and and use uh, roads, roads and different landmarks to get a feel for where that property is. Because some of the tools that we use, you're not gonna be able to see what exactly, um, you're not gonna be able to pinpoint the, the address right on, right on point. So you need to know the map a little bit. So then what I do is I take my list, I move from Zillow to a site called AirDNA. Uh, it's airdna.co, it's not a .com. But from there I go to AirDNA, And I will, they have a tool called the Rentalizer. So now if you're using the free version, you want to use the Rentalizer with a grain of salt because they may not comp properly off of other uh, properties in the area. But you can pin, you can put your exact address in there and it'll spit out what the data um, tool thinks that it's going to project per year. But really what I use AirDNA for is I'll go and search. All you can do on the free version is search the town or the city. I'll go in there and I will zoom in, depending on if it's a city with a high population, I'll zoom in to about a one to two mile radius. If it's not, if it's if it's a farther out um, outskirts city or it's not in a major metro area, I'll zoom out and go with a, anywhere from a five to even a 15 mile radius on that because that's gonna show where, um, comparable properties are. So in in the farther away from a metro you are, the more people are willing to drive and willing to travel. So from there, I'll see how many uh, listings are actually in that area. And when I search around in those, I will actually narrow down. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll generally, because I always work with single family homes, I'll, there's an option for uh, shared rooms and private rooms on there. So then I'll eliminate those. And I'll actually, if it's a three bedroom or a four bedroom house, I'll eliminate all the studios and one beds and two beds. And then I'll see what kind of properties are actually in the area so that I can get a feel for uh, how many properties are there, how many actual new listings there are. So with new listings, if there's a lot of them, then it's not really a proven area. If there's a lot of listings that have, you know, 50 or so reviews on them, then they're going to show that it's actually kind of a proven area. There's been houses that have been around there. There's travel to that area. So you can actually go there. So from there, uh, the other thing that I'm looking at is how many beds and how many guests that that house actually has. So after that, I moved to a website called MashVisor. It's mashvisor.com. There's a free version. You may need to pay for a version for uh, one month or two months while you're comping properties. I think it's around $50 a month. But from there, you can use MashVisor and you can actually sort by price. And what that'll show you is your occupancy rate. So I combine data across three different sites, AirDNA, MashVisor, 
And once you're on MashVisor, you're searching, if you sort it by price, high to low, you can search for warehouses start to go into the 60 to 70% range booked. And from there, you can see what, uh, what house, how many bedrooms you have, how many beds and baths, and, and how big the houses are. And, and you'll get an idea of what area they're in, and you can kind of organize based off of that to see if your houses fall in that area or not. And then from there, I moved to a site called Rabu. It's data, data.rabu, I think, .com. And you can, on there, you can actually search the address and you can see how many houses are in the area. Now, Rabu gives you data based on the next 30 days, and it also gives you seasonality data. So you can have data for the next 30 days based on, you can see how many houses are booked and what their pricing and availability is. And then you can also go and look at the seasonal data, and it'll tell you a rough average based on the percentage of occupancy, where you fall in the, you know, if, if it's in the 50% range, if it's in the 75% range of all properties. So it'll actually give you data based on how many different properties are there and how they're performing. So across all of these three platforms is how I comp properties out and I will actually combine my data across all three. There's not one that's going to give you exact information and there's not any definite way to say like this is definitely going to be a winner or this is definitely going to be a loser. You have to kind of comp all three sites. You have to decide for yourself whether that's going to be a winning property or not. And if it is, then, you know, go for it. If it's not or you're on the fence or it looks like it may be on the low end, then you may want to pass on it. The The best properties or the best deals sometimes are the ones that you don't take. And I want that to be very clear. A lot of people get excited, they get anxious when they're starting out and they want to go and comp a property and they'll try to make excuses to make sure that it, it works. You know, they want to make sure that it's actually a good property, but they'll actually turn around and, tr and, and essentially try to find a way to make it work where the data just says that it doesn't work or it's not going to be a winning property and you can definitely dig yourself into a hole very quickly doing that so you want to make sure that you have a winning property and don't be afraid to pass them up you might go through a bunch of losers and that's okay it's better to shy away from properties if you're not sure than to jump into a deal and lock yourself into a contract for a year or two years if you're not really sure that it's a good deal. And if it ends up being a loser, now you're stuck and you're gonna be on the hook for you know your furniture and all of this other stuff that goes along with it, but you're not really going to have uh, a, an opportunity to make money. So the whole goal here is to make money. We wanna find winning profitable properties. And so use those sites, AirDNA, Rabu and MashVisor and combine your data. Don't be afraid to turn property down and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.